Hey everybody, this week on Up Your Alley, we've got two great recommendations. First, I recommended for Jake the new Apple TV original movie starring Brad Pitt and George Clooney, Wolfs. And Jake recommended for me the Shudder original horror movie, In a Violent Nature. Both of them came out this year and are available for streaming. We're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk about PC Gamers' top 100 games list that has been updated. And Jake, anything to add? No, not this time. You're sitting on a new couch, man. That's new. I got a new couch. Yay! Hey. <laughs> I think this is the first time we've recorded the podcast while we're technically on the same piece of furniture. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh-huh. I, yeah it's, a, it's a nice change of pace. It's we're good. not across, across from each other. Right. We're more... A little catty corner. Yeah. Kitty corner? Catty corner. What do you say? Kitty corner? I say catty corner. I was going to say catty wampus. No. But that's, that's more a screw... A skew. A screw... I say a screw. This is a firm start to the show. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. It's called Up Your Alley. My name's Taylor Edgar. With me, as always, is my best friend, Jake Baggett. Say hi, Jake. Hey. We've been friends for like 20 some odd years, and we always recommended things to each other to watch, read, or listen to, or play. And now we have a show where we get to force the other person to watch that thing. This week, I made Jake watch a delightful little lighthearted fun movie starring two great movie stars, a real throwback to when movies could just be a little bit small with charming leads and a good story. And it's called Wolves on Apple TV. And Jake had me watch an experimental horror film. Yeah, boy. With no famous people in it called In a Violent Nature. This is how you do horror movies. Is it? Horror movies with famous people in it? Yeah, that's no fun. Horror movies make famous people. That's what they do. I can't argue with that. But yeah, so we're going to talk about those things. We're going to grade them on a scale of one to three based on how much it's up our individual alleys. But first, we're going to do a little catching up. New couch. New couch, man. So, big fan. Big fan. It's got a lot of electronics in it. It's got buttons mm-hmm. everywhere. Yeah. You want your head slightly up? You just push the head up button. Hold on. Found it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There it is. Oh, oh yeah. This is why we need a video component oh, to yeah. the podcast. Now, when you lay down, it can put your head up so that you don't have to worry about using your neck muscles to watch the TV. Yeah, because that's what I was worried about, having to use too many muscles while I'm watching the TV. And we talked about it for a while, mm-hmm. and we went with the power recliners because we do have a cat yes and she has been under this multiple multiple times yeah and since it goes so slowly down gives her a little bit of warning she jolts out she's not gonna get decapitated yeah, if i just slammed it down like yeah, you yeah, can yeah. do with a non-power uh-huh she would have been dead within two hours of owning this couch <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh does she have a collar no oh, okay uh-uh. she's yeah. not allowed outside i was gonna well i still I was going to say, you have to get one of those breakaway collars so they don't like choke themselves out. Oh my gosh, you just yeah. scared the hell out of me. Yeah. I wouldn't want that at all. As a former cat owner, we had to have little breakaway collars. What's fun about that is then you just find collars all over your house. Yeah, I was about like, to say. Oh, <laughs> this is another time my cat could have died while I was at work. <laughs> I'm glad that didn't happen. I was setting it all up, right? Mm-hmm. And she just jumps out of the mechanical works of it. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like, I have to find out how to close these things. What was the situation? Like, because you had people deliver it. It's a, like, mm-hmm. people don't know. Jake lives on, it's up a flight of stairs. Yep. It's a big couch. How many pieces did it come in? Uh, Each top bottom. Uh huh. So one, two, three, four. So it's like five recliners. Five, six, seven, in. eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven. Eleven. Wow. Yeah. Guys, uh, efficient, just old hat. They do this every day. Dude, oh, absolutely. Yeah. The, there's things that clearly takes two people, mm-hmm. but he would just prop it up on his body guide the other part in and then shove with his hips yeah to connect everything huh these guys were efficient my brother and i are whenever we have to move something it always seems like it's more complicated than i have to like we had an old it's like a fake fireplace mantle thing in the back room at my mom's house and she just wanted us to bring it down to the basement and we were getting it out and then we just have that moment we're like how did we get this in here because i don't understand how this didn't just materialize in this room because i have no memory of bringing it in (laughs) and it seems incredibly complicated to do this thing's going to be fun to get out professional movers is one of those things like i've seen oh my my brother-in-law sent me this thing where it's just uh i forget the name of the instagram account but it's just like guy videos and it says dude using a, a 
a, a backhoe or a front, like a, a bulldozer type thing with all the different little attachments. Mm. He's digging a hole and then like switching out the attachment to something else. And then he like picks up pieces of sheet metal and lays, lays them in place and then smooths everything out. And it's just the most fascinating thing where you see like someone that that's all they do and they're incredible at it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Movers are like that too. Like I've seen people like movers, especially people that like box up rooms where they just like show up and they're like, all right, I'm going to pack up this whole house. Mm. And they're done in an afternoon, something that would take me, like, any time I've had to move. It's a two-week operation to get everything boxed up. I don't want to move unless I can afford movers. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't can't do it anymore. I've moved too many times, and it's not fun. Yeah. It's the worst. It's always, you always have so much more stuff than you think. I mean, that's first world problems, for sure. Yeah. But, like, there's so much stuff that I I haven't seen in years, but then when I see it, I'm like, I should throw this out. And I'm like, mm, no, I'm not going to. I'm just going to keep this for Half absolutely the time. no reason. Yeah. Yeah. And also, it's like, I can't believe how much stuff I didn't box up. Yeah. This stuff could have easily been in boxes. I think I still have stuff in my basement from the last time I moved that I boxed up in that basement, and it's in the same box from a previous house that I lived in <laughs> that I had boxed up from the previous house and just put in the attic of that house. I but, got a couple of those here, yeah. Yeah, just old books and stuff like that. I'm bad about keeping books. Like, once I read a book, like, I don't have, like, I don't hunt, mm-hmm. but that's mm-hmm. how I treat books. Like, people treat, like, taxidermed animals. Like, I killed that lion. <laughs> I keep all my books, like, read all these. <laughs> yeah. All these pages. It's my accomplishments. I was a, f- I, I can't even remember where I read that from, but uh, people were like, why do you have a library when he's like, are you going to read all those books? And he's like, some people have read all those books. And some people <laughs> are just excited to know that they will never run out of books. Oh, yeah. I guess I can see that. For right? me, it's, it's definitely an accomplishment thing. After I get a book, I got to read it. Exactly, yeah. right? So it's like, some people have it because they're like, I've read all these books. Mm-hmm. And some people have it because they're like, I will never run out of books. I will, No, I shouldn't say I've read them all. There are plenty of them that you could walk into my, uh, especially like some of the history books that I have. Like there's a book by... Ah, uh, shit. I forget his name. Graham Linehan? No. But, uh... Where he talks about how this must be an aircraft carrier runway. <laughs> no. no, uh... From 12 BC. No, this was, is what... This is Jesus a, Force Jesus, One. He was, a, he was a senator. I forget. But it's a, the history of the Scotch-Irish people in, uh... And, uh... That moved to America. And, like, you can this see... sounds familiar. It's, uh... He, he was uh, a Virginia senator. Jim Webb. Jim Webb. That's right. It was Jim oh, Webb. yeah. Oh! Look at me, no one about Virginia yeah. history, boy. So Jim Webb wrote a book about the history of the Scots Irish, and uh, my dad told me to read it. And you could see there's a piece of paper where I stopped reading that book. No, yeah. <laughs> like it's a little bit through, and I'm just like, ah, oh, no, I'm, I'm it's done. It's a little with dry. <laughs> it, it's just a lot, but I, I'll circle back around to it the next time I'm feeling squirrely for some reason. Oh, Jim Webb, yeah, good, good dude. Yeah, I mean, he wrote a book. Exactly. It's more than I've done. <laughs> more than I've done. Yeah. I've met him. You have? Yeah. Yeah. It was more like a handshake thing. Well, I mean, he's a politician. Yeah. You're not a baby for him to kiss, so yeah, it's did. a handshake. I went up for the kiss. He was like, no. Oh, like that. I was like, oh, of course. Like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm just a little baby. I can't <laughs> even vote for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so uh, I sent you this earlier this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, PC Gamer sent out their list. Apparently, they do this every year where it's the 100 best games, and it's yeah. updated. We did the... What was it? Eurogamer. Eurogamers. Hundred and I best was, games that you should be playing right now. Yeah, and I was like in on that list. I was yeah. like, this is a really uh, comprehensive list. I appreciate their breakdown on all of these. Yeah. And then I saw this one, and I was like, what the hell does importance mean? Yeah, so they have it. <laughs> it's very strange. So it's PC Gamer, so it's not... Uh, allegedly, it's just PC games, but really what that means is it's every game that's not a Nintendo game. Well, basically. Like, because since PlayStation 2... In the uh, in the uh, author recommendations, the personal picks, yeah. The guy uh, did Majora's Mask. Yeah, it's it's like, like really going out a, on a limb there, buddy. Yeah, they have a repack that you could download, right? <laughs> Legally, yeah. It's like it's a real, real stretch, dude. Like I'm a Majora's Mask is my favorite one, favorite Zelda game. Yeah, you've said that. Well, multiple times. But then, the time. like number eleven on this is Metal but, Gear Solid Three. I don't consider Metal Gear Solid 3 a PC game. It is now because of the Master Collection Volume 1 so I guess, that came out. Is that why they're just putting all these games, they update this because list they every year? Ghost of Tsushima on there too. Right. That's Again, why I, I would wouldn't like, consider that I would a, a want PC to, game. I could see it both ways kind of yeah. because I would want to platform PC games uh, more. For sure. But also let people know. 
that are interested in getting into PCs. Like, you can play Ghost of Tsushima on here, too. And that's yeah. one of the best games on PlayStation. You can just get this as well on... Right. And actually, anything could be a PC game. Yeah. Like, they have the technology to get anything. That's the weirdest thing that I've been looking into. What's you know that? what I mean? Well, just how to... Like, we're having trouble just getting old games to run on new PC hardware. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, just, I'm not. But... It's wild stuff. Yeah. Because we have to emulate what they used to be like. My, you know? I got sent this thing that's a company is... They put out a thing. It's like a, a retro Nintendo 64, but apparently has 4K upscaling. Yeah, like analog 64. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Analog's doing... Did you see that thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know how that works, but it looks cool. It looks really cool. Yeah. It's uh, they just their new uh, way of... Hardware. But it runs, it reads the actual cartridge. Yeah, it runs the actual games. Which is why I feel good for actually holding on to all my N64 cartridges. That's pretty pretty badass. Yeah. Did you see the controller? I really yeah. like the new controller design. So, yeah, there's a company, I, I think it is actually, dough. Retro uh, makes a N64 controller that I have. It's called a Brawler. 8-Bit Doe. No, there, there's a company that's just called Retro. I think it's those people mm-hmm. that are making this thing. But oh. 8-Bit Doe has that uh, analog uh, pro controller that I have. the company that's making it. Regardless, but that, that's what it's based on. It's mm. like the Brawler 64 controller, mm. which I bought two of those. They're oh, pretty nice. Okay. But 8-Bit, yeah, though, the one I bought for really my cool. Switch, I love that controller. Yeah. I do want to get... I was talking Mario Party, new Mario Parties out, but I really don't have anyone to play Mario Party with, so <laughs> I'm not going to just get Mario Party. Loser. Just play for myself. <laughs> I'm not coming over to just for me and you to play Mario I'm Party. I'm going to trick you next time we <laughs> you record at my house. You'd be like, hey, didn't we already record an episode this week? I'm like, yeah, but we're just going to do something else. <laughs> you can come over here. We'll get Aaron to play it. Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> but anyway, so this list, uh, top 10. Mm-hmm. And like you said, they're rating these on quality, uh, hotness, yeah. playability, and importance. I can understand. But I can so understand. Hotness, here you go. I can understand basing it off of these things. I right. don't understand the numerical value that is attached to them. So importance I mean, obviously, and that's is the most confusing one. Well, all of, all of these hotness things are arbitrary. Hotness makes sense to me because hotness is like, this is the one that everybody's talking about. But they have uh, uh, rankings for that. So, like, number 10 yeah. on the list overall is Doom. 93 mm-hmm. Doom. And that's ranked first in importance. Doom 2 isn't on here. And I guess that's what's carrying Doom right. up there. It's impor- It's 9.99 out of 10 for importance. That's just which I kind of get for Doom. I mean, it's the first big first-person shooter. Yeah. It was on PC. Yeah, and it's a test of it's uh like what do we talk about the time to penis with any video game? It's how long anyone <laughs> makes a penis out of it. Yeah, and Doom's one of those things with any piece of technology. One of the first things people do is they crack it and find a way to make it run Doom. Yeah, like there are like uh you know uh what are they called fridge. Oscilloscopes. Fridges run Doom. Any piece of medical equipment, like you get something that like monitors your blood sugar and people are running Doom on it. Sonograms. Yeah. Everything can run Doom. Yeah. Um, but that then, is like, cool. Stardew Valley got sixth place, or sorry, fourth place in hotness. But uh, How is Stardew Valley a hot game? Stardew Valley? I mean, it's ranked number nine overall, which I, so, I think Stardew Valley is one of my favorite games. Yeah, that, Stardew Valley was you've ever recommended. a big deal when it came out. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like everybody picked it up, yeah. Because all of us didn't realize how starving we were for another Harvest Moon, right? And then this game just comes out. It's like, hey, uh, this is exactly what you want. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the uh, new update to come out on console. Oh yeah, he's still working on that. I'm waiting on Haunted Chocolatier, man. Yeah, that was supposed to be this year. It doesn't look like it's going to be. I cannot wait. But he's one of those people that you you know you don't want to uh, rush him. So top five, uh, number five is Persona 5 Royale. That's a JRPG. I'm not. I tried it. I gave it a couple hours, and it's just not for me. Yeah. But again, that's a an older game that they've you know put onto this list. Mm. Like what year? Uh, I don't half, know how old it is. Uh, Plus, see. they just came remade, out in 2022. Yeah, they just remade Persona 3. Yeah. And uh, my friend says that she loves that one. That's her favorite one. And number four is Minecraft. I mean, obviously... Still one of the most popular games ever made. Yeah. Um, so that makes sense. Like one of the number one selling games of all time, I think, right? Yeah. Number three, Elden Ring, which got first place in hotness. A weird body horror game that's, it's not even a, like, yeah, I, how don't do get you me wrong. quantify hauntness? I now? love, that's what mm. I, I don't understand. I okay. love Elden Ring. I yeah. think Elden Ring's a great game. I'm on my third playthrough. I would say of it. it hit just like Game of Thrones, though, because I was talking to people that just play FIFA. 
you yeah. know. And they're like, I bought Elden Ring to play it. And I was like, that's that's weird. That's wild, dog. Yeah. And he was like, but yeah. It's, it's like hotness? everybody's talking about it. It was so fair. Number two, a disco. What was its uh, importance? Uh, Elden Ring? Yeah. Uh, Elden Ring got a 8.6 for importance. Damn. But an 8.68 for quality, which I think it's one of the most. It's not a great looking game. Like, it's a huge world and everything works really well, but that's I don't think beautiful. it's. beautiful. What are you talking about? I'm just saying it's not. The fidelity of the graphics aren't incredible like well i think what importance is, importance is trying to say is how influential it is in but uh, isn't isn't that more gaming wouldn't you say elden ring's more of like the culmination of things that had come before it like the dark souls demon souls i would say because it's whereas doom is importance because it was the first one or so yeah that's like two different types of importance isn't right. it it's like this is uh important to uh game play right where that one's where doom is important to game maybe it's building a, maybe it's important because it got more uh demon souls or souls like game casuals like me into it that's exactly i guess that kind of makes sense and it was the first uh quote-unquote open world yeah. uh dark souls game dark souls like game mm-hmm. and like that's an achievement on its own how do you create something like that and i think that they accomplished that pretty amazingly yeah so, but in terms of importance, I can see how that's confusing now because right. I don't know how this is going to influence any type of game it, beyond what the formula has always been. Right. That's been influential. It's like Doom's important because there was nothing like Doom before Doom. Yeah, Doom showed you that a simple change of perspective can make a fantastic game. Exactly. And then Disco Elysium's number two. I've never played that game. I love it. I need to get back into it. Yeah. I don't think you'll like it. Probably not. I don't know. It's a, it's, it's a lot about communism. It's pretty darn funny. Disco Elysium, and it's about communism? Yeah, it's pretty darn funny. The beginning like, of the game is... Is it like East Berlin? No, it's... Oh, uh, oh shoot. It's a fake country name, but... East Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. But uh, the beginning of the game is you trying to convince, your, convince yourself to wake up. Huh. So you yep. have to fight your inner demons. I'm kind of done with those experimental games. I love them, bro. And number one, Baldur's, Baldur's Gate 3. Which I think don't this, ever call yourself a gamer again if you're going to be all like I'm kind of done with experimental games. I'm done with experimental. Everything. Can I just get a Call of Duty, please? Call of Duty Black Ops Six. One Call of Duty, please. Is doing uh, podcast ads now. Can I, I do podcast ads for? Him. Can I hold one bumper down and the other bumper, please? Uh, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I can't tell you the last time I played a Call of Duty game. If it's got a good, if the new Call of Duty comes out and people say it's got a great single person campaign, I yeah. might get it. No, I'm not gonna. Because I'd like to get a new first person shooter. I'm not gonna touch it. Yeah, but Baldur's Gate, I think this made me actually want to try. You Baldur's want a new Gate. first person shooter? You should get Smoking Aces on the PC. Based on the film? No. Oh, it's not called Smoking Aces anymore. What's it called? Something the, Aces. Smoking Aces. But it's uh, that game looks really cool. Hmm. You beat and a bunch of people up. Then the one in the. The couple other number eight is a game called Baltero, which is a poker roguelike. Balatro, sure, and that game is amazing. I've had that recommended to me for by a couple different people. It's amazing. It's on the phone now. Get it? Yeah. Yes, you'll love it. Okay. Uh, no, I have it on my Switch. I've just oh, never played it. Yeah. Oh, yes, it's great. Yeah, it's super addictive. It's ga- it's poker, but I'm not a big poker guy with uh, with the uh, game mechanics to it. Hmm. It's awesome. And then number six is something I mentioned to you when I sent you this list is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Yeah. Which I firmly, I, I feel more and more I'm the only person that doesn't like that game. I'm thinking, well, I know I've spoken to another person that doesn't like it. Really? Yeah. I, I've given it three separate opportunities. But I don't understand how it's it. not a fun For, game. I love it. I don't get it either. I like open world RPGs. As soon as I found out Gwent, as soon as I found out how... The mechanics of Gwent worked. I yeah. was like, this is now a Gwent game. And I you continued, just... I progressed the story so that I could play more Gwent. Right. And then I found that there's a Gwent competition, and then there was even parts in the Gwent competition where it was like, hey. If you don't know, Gwent's a game inside of Witcher 3. Yeah. They're yeah. like, hey, for $1,000, I'll throw the Gwent game. And I was like, hey, you're going to give me all you got because I want to beat the hell out of you in Gwent. <laughs> uh, that. After that, I was like, this is the best. This is such a good game. Yeah. I, I the music know. is amazing. Three separate opportunities I've started that game, played for s- multiple, it's, multiple hours, and just been like, no, it doesn't grab me. Both its DLCs have stories that are better than movies I've seen. I'm sure. It's a great game. just doesn't reach me. I like the Witcher TV show, even, so it's not even like not liking the world. 
But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I think you're just uh, outright rejecting it. I don't know why. I don't want to be that guy. You're just like a like a penicillin type thing where for some reason your body just rejects it sometimes. Yeah, I guess. And it's just you. You're just like, no, I just don't want it. I yeah. just don't want to do it. It's like, it's going to help you. You're like, I don't care. Yeah. I just don't want it. And I can't even say that it's the like the RPG elements and the crafting and stuff because I like Elden Ring. And yep. that's got pretty complicated mechanics to it as well. You can't say you don't like open worlds because you do. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I can't put my finger on it. I wish I could. I wish I, I wish I, I honestly wish I had some like completely succinct and yeah. actualized reason why I can point out why I don't like this game. Yeah. Sometimes it happens, you know, yeah. because there's things that it, I'm, you know, there's things that I'm sure I would enjoy yeah. if I gave it a shot or more of a shot. And I'm just like, now, I, I, like The Wire, you have any idea how much everybody's trying to tell me to watch The Wire? Yeah. And I'm like, I, I watched the first season and I was like, this is great. Yeah. I have no motivation to watch the second season. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing another game right now that's kind of leading towards that right now, too, and it makes me sad. What game is that? Uh, Echoes of Wisdom. Zelda. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You're not feeling it? I've I've done the first two dungeons, and I'm just like, yeah, it's, it's fun, but it's not like Tears of the Kingdom where it grabbed me, and I'm like, I'm going to sit down and play this for hours. Mm, yeah. Mm. But, I still I mean, want to play it. I mean, yeah. Just it's, got a lot of games to it's play. Good. But, you know, sometimes, Jake, you might have to, have to come back to something, and this might go back to your recommendation for next week where you thought you didn't like it, but maybe around a second viewing. You're going to make me do something a- again? No. No, oh. just something that you might have poo-pooed a little bit at first. But we'll talk about that later. But we're okay. going to talk about our recommendations for this week. You're going to make me watch The Big Short again? <laughs> no. You don't deserve to watch The Big Short again. <laughs> I tell you what, I almost watched The Big Short two nights ago because I started <laughs> watching uh, Billions. Yeah. Just because it popped up on Amazon, it's like, you want to watch Billions? And I started watching Billions on YouTube shorts like uh, Connor O'Malley talked about. Dwayne Rock Johnson? Yeah. No, that's Ballers. Oh. Billions is uh, the guy, redhead Damian Lewis, the captain from Band of Brothers. Oh, yeah. And he's a hedge fund guy, and Paul Giamatti's a, a U.S. attorney that's trying to you know, put him in prison for doing bad hedge fund stuff. <laughs> and it made me want to watch The Big Short again. Oh. So I'm just like, I miss financial jargon that i don't understand being said at me in a cool way <laughs> i went to a party and met a couple new guys and we were all talking about movies and they brought up the big short and movie i was like rules and they're like I-, I love that movie and i was like i hate that movie yeah and they're like why do you hate that movie he's like it's great and i said i hate a movie that's like hey let's stop watching the movie so that we could explain to you what the fuck is going on in our movie because we're not doing a good <laughs> job explaining it to you yeah. while you're watching it they're like, okay, I can understand that. <laughs> it's like what, like, Billiards has a lot of the financial equivalent of, remember when we watched Twisters and they were doing hot science where they're just saying nonsensical science jargon really quickly and it makes them sound like intelligent people? Yeah. Billions does that with financial terms. Sure. Where I'm just like, okay, this guy man, knows what he's talking about. Man, when I'm at work, uh, I work on computers, right? Some yeah. of this stuff is done through like networks Mm -hmm. so through the computer and i have to ask a friend to like could you console into this and take a look at something And there's like okay i'm looking at it he's like i'm getting some interference here i'm just gonna try something here you just hear a little clicks clacks i'm like this is great he's just like he's like hacking this is good stuff he's like i'm just gonna have to bypass this part a little bit slow us down i was like this is wonderful yeah i was like if you just had a little bit of experience in your voice this would be an action scene (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just like some pulsing synth behind you yeah. or something like that because <laughs> he was just standing next to me he wasn't even using yeah. both hands yeah he was using one hand to balance the laptop while he stood and talked to me and he was just pushing buttons i was like dude just this is so laid back about i was it. like dude this is like the coolest you've ever you look so cool for a 90s character <laughs> speaking of cool for 90s characters let's talk about wolves okay so that was a nice little segue not bad yeah i think pulp fiction was 80s no, that was early 90s. Well, okay. Pulp Fiction? Oh, yeah, for sure. That was like 90... I'll take you. Two. Okay. Um, but I was just talking about how George Clooney and Brad Pitt were cool in the 90s. I hear you. So, um, yeah. So, Wolves is available on Apple uh, TV+. Plus. Uh, Pulp Fiction was 94. And it stars Brad Pitt and George Clooney. The movie starts out uh, with Amy Ryan. She's running for mayor of New York City. And she's got a dead guy in a room. Yeah, in her hotel room, and she doesn't want anybody to know about it. So she calls a phone number that someone gave her, and it's someone that could fix this type of thing if something ever goes wrong. And it's George Clooney, and he comes to get rid of the body. But then there's a knock at the door. 
Brad Pitt's there, and he's also there to get rid of the body because the owner of the hotel called Brad Pitt. Mm -hmm. So now they're conflicting fixers, but since both of the people want to make sure the job's done properly, they have to work together. Uh But they don't want to work together. Because they're both supposed to be the best at their job. And they're both lone wolves. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And they work together, and it's a fun little action movie. And I saw it, and I was like, this is... I enjoyed this movie a lot more than I thought I would. I don't know if it's just a nostalgia thing of I like seeing the movie stars I grew up with doing the things that they used. Like, it's kind of one of those things that Clint Eastwood still makes movies where he's just a grumpy old man, and there's a market for people that go to see those movies. Because, like, I remember him. I'm going to watch George Clooney do cool guy shit until he's well into his 80s. Yeah. Just because I'm just like, yes, I like watching this man do this thing. George Clooney is a phenomenal actor. Yeah. That's what I was doing. And as is Brad Pitt. The whole time, I, uh, Brad Pitt is a great actor. Yeah. I would say he's a great actor. Wait, so you think- George Clooney is a better actor than Brad Pitt? Yes. No. Absolutely. No way. Yes, absolutely. That's 100%. Wait, let me think. Yeah, go ahead. I'm trying to think of my favorite George Clooney movies. Michael Clayton. Michael Clayton's a great movie. Up in the Air is a great movie. Yeah. No, I think I got to give it to Brad Pitt. What is it called? The Descendants? Is that the one with- In Hawaii? Yeah. Yeah. That was written by... Nat Fax. Nat Faxon and the Dean from Community. Man, Nat Faxon. That yeah. is so funny. From the milkshake in Reno 911 <laughs> yeah. to winning an Academy Award. I love him. Yeah. it's a good guy. Regardless. No, I think Brad Pitt's a better actor. Uh, I, I I don't know how to dispute you, yeah. but I just love George Clooney. I think I don't he's think, the better actor. I don't think either of them give great performances in this movie this is where i disagree i was captivated by george clooney in this movie i was i thought brad pitt was better in this movie. that's awesome we really found another thing we disagree on that's awesome this is a fun disagreement all right well let's go let's bring in a a, a wild card in oceans 11 how would you throw in damon i didn't watch oceans 11 you never saw oceans 11 no i haven't seen oceans 11 oceans 12 obviously you haven't seen oceans 12 if you haven't seen oceans 11 i haven't seen oceans 8 with anne hathaway there's how why would I watch I those I thought movies? everyone our age has seen Ocean's Eleven. No. I am a, a it's contradictory one of the, guy. It's one of the best movies. Like, not just like a good movie. It's a fucking great, it's a heist movie with your favorite actor, George Clooney, in it. He's not my favorite actor. Bruce Campbell is my favorite actor. Okay. He's not in the movie. Okay, well, no, he's not. No. There's a chance he could make a cameo, but no. regardless, you, yeah. I, I am flabbergasted you've never seen Ocean's Eleven. No. No, I haven't seen it. God damn it. I yeah. kind of want to make you just watch Ocean's Eleven for next week. You do you, buddy. No, I have something better for you. <laughs> That's in my back pocket, though. I'm going to find a reason to make you watch. God damn I'm it. sure I'll love it. There's an Affleck in it. Yeah, there's Casey Affleck. Casey Affleck. Oh, we might bring in Ocean's Eleven for all Affleck April. <laughs> You're going to expand it to include Casey Affleck? I said all Affleck. Wow. They're all Afflecks in Wow. Life. Hey, Matt Damon's in it. He's an, he's an honorary Affleck. Wow. Changing your own All right, rules. No, I'm, I'm shocked by you've never. It'd be like if you found out that I had never seen Return of the Jedi. You'd be like, how have you never seen that? Return of the Jedi yeah. and Ocean's Eleven are on the same uh, no, level of not. cinema. Yeah, Ocean's Eleven's probably a better movie than Return <laughs> of the Jedi. I, I couldn't fight that. Yeah. I don't think Return of the Jedi Regardless, is that so fantastic. Well, Brad Pitt comes in, and th- through misadventures, they go down... It all takes place over one night in New York City and in the criminal underworld and everything like that. I just thought it was a great movie. I thought it was super fun. I thought Mm -hmm. the action was good. Mm -hmm. I thought the chemistry, obviously the chemistry between Brad Pitt and George Clooney, it could be those two guys talking to a piece of sheetrock and they'd be the most charismatic people on the planet. Yeah. So, yeah. What do you think of this uh, film? Yeah. So, this is a three type of movie. It's a three? Yeah. This is great. Yeah. It's fantastic. So Like you said, their chemistry is beautiful. That's because both of them are awesome actors. Mm Mm-hmm. It's just, they understand how to play off of each other. Yeah. That lady at the beginning, what's her name? Amy Ryan. Amy Ryan. Yeah. She's so pretty, man. She was the... Um, Holly in The Office. Holly in The Office. She was also the mom of the missing kid in uh, Gone Baby Gone. And she was also in uh, Only Murderers in the Building. I still haven't watched a single episode of that show. That will be a recommendation to Another you. Another thing like mm-hmm. uh, uh, Witcher 3. There's no reason I shouldn't like it, but something about that show makes me just not want to watch it. Even though I love Steve Martin, Martin Short... I was in the same boat as yeah. you were until one day I sat down and I was like, I have to give Steve Martin Martin Short a shot. I think it's and be- then I did, and I was like, I'm really happy I did. I love Martin Short 
probably more than Steve Martin. I would feel you on that. I'm a diehard Jiminy Glick fan. I think Jiminy mm-hmm. Glick is one of the funniest fictional characters ever created. I was worried that they weren't going to tap into that Martin Short, but yeah. they do. He's and also it's someone. Very wonderful. Whenever he's on a talk show, mm-hmm. he's just a perfect like throwback. Speaking of like George Clooney, or Brad Pitt, it's like that level of movie star where they're just so charismatic and so watchable. Martin Short's that type of person on talk shows where you're like this is like a throwback to old talk shows. Like when you'd see clips from like Johnny Carson when Rodney Dangerfield would be on. Mm. And you just be like, this is what make a, makes a talk show great. When Martin Short's on it. And then recently, uh, he also, I think he's on Only Murders in the Building too. Isn't Nathan Lane in a couple? Yeah. Yeah. I love him as well. Nathan Lane in that too. Yeah. An amazing guest. It, it was a thing where I was like, why haven't I watched this yet? Really? And then I watched it and then it was like, this is great. This is great. Kind of like when I made you watch The Bear. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would just never had an inkling to watch The Bear, though. The Bear's great, though. I thought that was going to give me more stress than be an actual really good show. Yeah. Uh, so with Wolves, I don't know why this movie didn't come out in theaters. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's because they want you to watch streaming. Yeah. And uh, this movie would have been awesome on the big screen. I, I think I would have loved it. I would have. I think this would have made more money than The Joker 2. Yeah. For sure. I think that's a low bar. Like, I can... Because I... Like, so... Mega- Megalopolis is staying in theaters I hope they longer it, like, than Morbius. Joker. I saw a, a thing on Instagram that was a smash cut of uh, local TV news acres trying to pronounce the Joker movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do. Just like everyone messing up. It's like, Joker 2, Folly Adex. <laughs> <laughs> Such a bad movie. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like this is a movie. My mom always asked me like what we're talking about on the show. And I told her, I'm like, I'm going to make uh, Jake watch Wolves. Mm-hmm. And she says, "What's that? Like it's a new movie with George Clooney and Brad Pitt." She's like, "George Clooney and Brad Pitt are in a movie together." I'm like, "Yeah, mm-hmm. that used to be a thing where like this would come out, you know, 15 years ago. This would come you out. Say, in, yeah, you just make a commercial that says George Clooney Brad Pitt movie in theaters this April. Go fucking see it, and everyone would be like, "Here's a hundred million dollars. Thank yeah, you for making like, that thing." I'm gonna go see a movie with two actors I really enjoy. Yeah, and then it, it should have been like that. Now it's lost in Apple TV, right? You know, it's a shame because I think this is a great movie and I think people, I think it's a great movie. I loved it from beginning to end. If you haven't used your free trial of Apple TV plus, Mm -hmm. I think it's worth signing up for the 30 days and watching this for free. I would say watch it. Absolutely. Yeah. I want people to watch it. Reason I, I was in love with George Clooney's character watching it more and more. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was somebody. The characters are unnamed through the whole thing. Like you never find out. Every single character was unnamed in it, I believe. I think so, yeah. yeah. Well, except like the gangster guys gives their names. Yeah, that's yeah. true. No, because they just go by their eth- ethnicity. Do they? Mostly. Oh, yeah, one of them except was for like one of them. Dimitri. Yeah, maybe. Regardless. Yeah. Regardless, what I enjoyed from George Clooney is just how great he is at injecting emotion in a moment so well. Mm-hmm. The stuff with uh, the shootout at the end. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, you know? there's a very sweet moment of that. So uh, wonderfully sweet moment. There's a, a the kid that you know light spoilers for the movie. The mm-hmm. person and you see it in the trailers. Like I rewatched a, a trailer of this and I'm like, oh, that kind of just gave the whole movie away. Yeah. But um, the kid that you think is dead, he isn't really dead, and so that just plays into you know that's kind of the main jumping off point after Act One mm-hmm. is you know finding out what's going on and what they have to do to tie up all these loose ends. Yep. And uh. He's a fantastic addition to it. He has like the the backseat role. Yeah. Kind of like when we talked about um, It's like a new kid, you know. You're well, showing up a new actor and he, they give him plenty of space to do right. amazing scenes. Yeah. And you're watching him. And, and you're he like, holds his own next to two of the biggest movie stars and you're like, of all yeah, time. This guy's great. Yeah. Yeah. And it reminded me the movie I thought about it the most uh, and that kid's name is uh, Austin Abrams. He's been in a couple things. He was in uh, Paper Towns, did you ever see that? No. Based on a John Green book. It was good. Mm-hmm. Um, but the movie that this reminded me of the most was something we talked about a couple uh, months ago, The Instigators, with Casey Affleck and Matt Damon. Mm-hmm. Another movie where it's just like, this is a great movie. Yeah. How did it get shit? And I think that was on Apple TV Plus, too. I think so, yeah. So it's just like, how are they getting all these movies that probably would have made $50 Because they have dollars? plenty of money. I guess they're a trillion-dollar company. And they don't know how to start a movie company. They did. That's the thing. They That's have, the thing. They don't know. They run their own movie pass. Yeah. It's, it's just they like, just make the movies in your house. They're like, what if we what if we just buy really good directors and actors and uh, scripts and we just produce these great movies and then put them on Apple TV Plus? Yeah, it's like that's 
great. Why don't you just, you know, make the world's best sandwich and then throw it in the gutter? Yeah. You're like, there you go. See, that's the thing. Like, a lot of people, when you think about, like, big companies, for some reason, if you were to tell me that uh, Amazon had more money than Apple, I would be like, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But they don't. Like, Amazon has, like, $1.8 trillion in market cap. So when Amazon's like, we're going to spend a billion dollars making a Lord of the Rings thing, I'm like, good. <laughs> you guys can do that. Second se- You didn't watch any Rings of Power. No. Second season of Rings of Power was okay. Yeah. They had the Siege of Eregion, which was nice. Uh, oh, no. Downfall of Celebrimbor, once uh, Sauron comes in his fair form of Anatar, the bringer of gifts, which leads to the downfall of Eregion and the forging of the Rings of Power. I know who Celebrimbor is. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mansplain Celebrimbor to me. <laughs> Celebrimbor. That's what I'm doing. I'm elf. I'm elf splaining. <laughs> don't don't elf splain. <laughs> don't elf splain the fall of Aragian to me. Regardless, uh, Calibrimbor. Did you play uh, Shadow of Mordor? Yeah, he gets. Uh, no, he's a badass in those games. He's a badass in those games, but he also gets the uh, titular line. He does say he was the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, they <laughs> they say it in this too. They lead into it. It's pretty great. Oh no! You know how this season ends? You're gonna That's hate great. this. What's that? You're going to hate this. So uh, it, in the all two seasons, and spoilers for a show no one watched, and everyone saw this telegramming. So the, the season starts, first season starts with uh, this guy landing down from a comet, and you don't know his name, but he's got vague, ma- vague magical powers, and he's got a big beard. And I was like, no one knows who this guy is, and he has to go on a quest to find his name. And he's out there with some proto-hobbits, the Harfoots, and they go out to Rune, way out in the west, and they find an evil wizard out there. And that's where they find Tom Bambadil, and Tom Bambadil's in this, and he's great, and they sing his little song, and it's very cute. But when he's leaving, the last big reveal for the season is all the Harfoots are uh, leaving by, and they have to say bye to him, and they don't have a name. They're like, oh, he's a Grand Elf. They're like, thank you, Grand Elf. And he's like, Gandalf. <laughs> you know what? I was just like, oh, that's so bad, but okay. <laughs> Grand <laughs> Elf. Is that anything like Gandalf? Yeah. It's like an old Ben Obi Wan situation. Only worse because it's just like everyone says, "Thank you, Grand Elf. Thank you, Grand Elf." And there's one guy that's got kind of an accent. He's like, "Thank you, Gandalf." <laughs> and he just takes that. Oh, his name. <laughs> oh Gandalf, you get going <laughs> precisely just like that. It's not great, but it's it's a fun show. Reg- what was I talking? Oh yeah, so we're talking about how things. Am- Apple yeah. has over three and a half trillion dollars. Like mm-hmm. they've got more than one and a half times the money of Amazon. They should just. It's, that's why they're being so protective about these. They things. started their own movie pass, it's and they just don't have. Yeah. They're not paying overhead well, for theaters. They're just like here. This is for all you Apple lovers out there. Yeah. you know what I mean. And it's not for us to yeah. enjoy. And that's what I don't like about it. It feels very <sighs> uh, white picket fence type. Shit. I didn't think about that at all. So you think part of the marketing is having a George Clooney movie and be like, oh, it's on Apple. Do you not? Yeah, like it's one of the things like having uh, like when you text me and they're a green, t- it's a green text bubble, and I'm just like, mm, look at this guy. Yeah, exactly look like this that. guy. So you think this is a green text movie where it's like, oh, you haven't seen? Yeah, wolves? it was for people that have asshole phones oh. uh, to be big assholes about it. Yeah, that's fucking. I didn't even think about that. It makes perfect sense to me. Maybe that's because my, I'm not inside of that Apple lifestyle. Maybe that's my just benevolent and rose tinted <laughs> version of. Of capitalism, <laughs> where I'm like, why wouldn't they want everyone it's, to see this move? <laughs> and you're like, yeah. no, that's what capitalism is. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want people to see it. would see. be amazing if they were just like, yeah, check this movie out. because it's, it's really good. We did a really good job. It's fun. But no, we should really gatekeep art so that oh. people don't experience it. Other well, than this the movie people makes that me do sad. It. Yeah, because it's a great movie. It is a great movie. I, I loved it. Yeah. I was laughing. It's a good movie when I start laughing, you yeah. know? And it's super early in the movie when I start laughing. So my favorite thing that made me laugh. I was going in this movie being like, you, uh, this does, this feels like a I stretch. Got the, I got that vibe from you when I right? recommended it, it to just you. just like, this doesn't feel like anything yeah. interesting. And I knew it'd break Nobody's through. talking about it. And then the first couple moments of it, when she's pulling her purse out from underneath and she uh-huh. slaps blood all over, I was like, okay, we're having a good time here. There's a great scene. So they're at a diner and they're waiting for a page to come in where they can find out where like a drug drop is. And the pager goes off, and it's there's no words, but it just had me laughing hysterically. Where the pager goes off, and like George Clooney and Brad Pitt are both looking at it, and then they both quietly are staring at it, 
and then they both pull out reader glasses <laughs> yeah. out of their pockets because they're getting old so they can read the pager. <laughs> and it was just this like moment of tension between the two of them, like neither of them wanting to admit that they couldn't see it. <laughs> and then at the same time, they both pull out their little cheaters, and I'm just like, yeah, that's boy. a fucking great joke. We're old, dude. Yeah. We're all old. They're old men. There's a the great people that we idolize that they're old. still idolize themselves yeah. are having to admit to themselves that they are Old. George Clooney's a good guy, and sometimes he'll just write an open letter in a newspaper that says, this guy's too old to be president, and I don't want him to be president <laughs> anymore, and then he's not the president anymore. And then there's a moment in the movie where they look into the screen, and they look dead at you in the eyes, and they say, you're getting old, too. <laughs> but you're it's fun. You're getting old, too. Isn't this fun? But isn't this, isn't it nice? Yeah. Isn't it nice that we're so doing yeah, that's, this? yeah, that's a three for Wolves. Wolves is just, Th- it's a fun movie. Wolves is really great. Yeah, I had a great time with it. Keep, Everybody keep, should watch it. I liked the action was to a minimum. I like that they are both characters that are really good at their jobs, but they're both big, gigantic assholes yeah. that will never admit that they're wrong. I think it's the kind of asshole that's fun because it's the asshole that's a facade. It's Yeah, and it's they protective. Both, and they're both too proud to drop the facade in front yeah. of the other person. Exactly. They're, like they're, when George Clooney's trying to get rid of a body, he does this cool move where he has it on a luggage rack from a hotel, and he like rolls it up, lifts it up in a thing and like does this cool little move to get the body yeah seamlessly into the trunk of the car uh-huh. and then later on uh he says Brad he's like i saw you watch me do that and he's like you're gonna use that he's like well yeah i'm probably gonna steal that <laughs> from you <laughs> it's like it was really cool yeah it's a fun movie so check out Wolves. absolutely mm-hmm. and jake loves it when people gatekeep art in the sake of ca- capitalism and profits. yeah it's really nice that when somebody creates something you're not allowed to watch it unless yeah. you uh play by the rules exactly that's so good. Don't pirate things. Don't, I think we agree with that, too. Don't pirate things, because that way you'd be able to watch whatever you want. Yeah. And we don't need that. And then you'd get joy in your life. And then you have... To, uh, that's stealing. Yeah. Because uh, you took a movie out of somebody's mouth. They only have $3.6 trillion. <laughs> they paid for it. Yeah. And then you snatched it away from them and said, no, you can't watch it. I can. Yeah. Horrid. Yeah. All right. Let's get in Jake's recommendation for me. Uh, Hell yeah, buddy. Uh, horror spookies. film. Spooky season, Hell in yeah. a violent nature. In a violent nature. Jake, now, full disclosure, uh-huh. you had not watched this when you recommended it to no, me. No, I have not. So when you- Still haven't watched it. You still haven't watched it? No, I'm just <laughs> I watched it. I mean- <laughs> <laughs> It would have been funny to be <laughs> sitting here- no, So what do you think? <laughs> yeah, so you tell me, would, you, would I like it? <laughs> do you think I- I don't want to watch it. I was my too, alley? I was too scared to watch it, so I made you watch it. And then so. you recommended it to me, and that'd be my rec for this week. So, yeah, happy. you told me before you left my house uh, last week, you're like, oh, I haven't watched it yet, but I think yeah. you're going to like it. So if I was like, I think I'm going to like it. I was so, like, well, yeah, I just really was... You wanted to talk about a spooky movie. It's, well, it's I want to talk about a spooky movie. This was the one that was on my radar, mm-hmm. but I liked the approach of the movie because it was from the perspective of the slasher, right? Yes. And I felt that we are far enough in your horror journey uh-huh. that you would be able to appreciate the twist on the formula. Okay. So if you if I had recommended this to you, what would you have given it? Three. It's a three for you. So you're happy you picked that's kinda what I want to get at. You're happy you picked it. This is a classic to me. And you probably would have recommended it again if I hadn't if you had seen it ahead of time, you still would have wrecked it. it. Yeah. Okay. This movie is I wrote about a page and a half to my movie group. Okay. About how much I love this movie. So Typically, I write stuff to them being like, this movie's good, or this movies are back. But yeah. this one, I was like, okay, there's a couple scenes that I need to explain you, to you guys that were awesome. <laughs> did you write to the people about Wolves? I told them- uh, Wolves is great. Goddamn, George Clooney is one of the best. <laughs> yeah. I literally just said that. But I was like, everybody, this, this is a great movie. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I said, Wolves, Wolves is great. Because I watched Wolves, and then I watched uh, Violent Nature right after. And I was like, uh, so I said to them, uh, watch Wolves. It was great. And then I watched Violent Nature. I was like, watch Violent Nature. There are some amazing choices that they did. <laughs> so I think horror is just much more of my wheelhouse. For sure. I ex- I understand it a lot. And, yeah, uh, and smug, competent assholes is more my <laughs> wheelhouse, which is <laughs> why I like the I also thought so you were about to say it because this movie is very smug to me. Oh, it's a very Violent smug Nature. movie. It's an unapproachable movie. Yeah? Yeah. Damn. What's, what, would, what are you going to give it? So... If you, people don't know, so this movie is it's a horror uh, slasher trope. There's a, a boy named Johnny. Yep. He's, and it starts out with just a shot on a, a, a forest, and then you see like this necklace, 
you hear people talking in the background. They're like, oh, what's this ne- necklace? And they just take it. Yeah. And then uh, there's a shot of a dude coming up out of the ground. And you see him from the back, and it's, it's it's essentially a Jason movie. Yeah, it's very Jason Voorhees. It's a very it's like a Friday the Thirteenth movie essentially, except you're always with for except for very small exceptions, you're always with the killer. And the only yeah, except for some exceptions, but right. you're, you're typically with he's within earshot of everything. So with like Johnny is always present in the scene at the very beginning. The, like he follows the kids, and there's a campfire scene, and it's just like the that's Friday the Thirteenth two. Sure. So I got that reference because I saw Friday the Thirteenth too. Hell yeah, dude! Uh, when we're explaining the stories, yeah, oh yeah. And the kid, one kid's like, "Oh," and they said, "You know, is they killed his their son died, and then they covered it up, and then there was a big massacre, and people say he's still whatever, blah yeah. blah blah blah." Mm-hmm. And he's there, and then he kills a whole bunch of teenagers, and yeah. So <clears throat> uh, I tried to do this the right way. Mm-hmm. I was like, "I'm gonna wait." I went down. Uh, in a little studio where we watch stuff and we record normally. I popped some popcorn. I made myself a uh, uh, Coca-Cola <laughs> Zero Sugar and Ritual alcohol-free <laughs> bourbon. And I'm like, I'm going to enjoy watching this movie. Hell yeah. I did not like this. At all? One little bit. Damn. This is a hard one for me. Damn. This Okay. That's so, so great. Here's why. One, there is uh, one kill in this. That I liked. There's one kill in this that I thought this is the one that everyone is probably going to be talking about. Like, oh, you remember when this happened? So I'm going to guess that that one is the yoga. Yes. Okay. I thought that was kind of their uh, key one where it's like, this is the one that, you mm-hmm. know, this is what people are going to be talking about. Mm-hmm. There's one kill about this that I hated so much. I'm going to guess that that one is the uh, uh, log splitter. No. Wow, log okay. splitter! I like. So, okay, okay. We can go. We can go mostly spoilers for this because it's slasher. It's just people getting murdered. He's an unstoppable uh-huh. killing machine. It's not some big twist at the end like an M Night Shyamalan. I would say that there is a fun twist to this movie, but it's not like something where it's. If you've seen so, slasher movies, you know what's going to happen for the majority of this runtime. Yes, I can agree with that. It's a vessel. It's like yeah. it's like uh, it's like rice in sushi. Speak sushi glory holes. <laughs> like it's just like the plot of this movie is just a vessel, so you can see the cool ways that they kill people. Oh, almost there, there a are bit. there are cool ways that they yes. kill people in this. Yes, uh, but there's also well, there's oh man, I so want to talk about here, it so bad. My, okay, yeah, 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 talk about it. So, are you going to tell me that this movie is a commentary on something? A commentary, no, but okay. it has direction and has theming. Yeah, it has uh, cinematography. Mm-hmm. It has competency that is uh, artistic. Does it have cinematography? Say. And the cinematography is artistic because of its lack of cinematography no i think that there's a wonderful amount so, so the movie is shot in four by three yes i noticed right? i had that i forgot my fucking notepad but i put, wrote that and it looks kind of grainy like almost like it's a vhs tape that's how a lot of us especially our age experienced horror movies horror yeah, movies for sure vhs style which is a, a very small cropped screen mm-hmm. uh almost I a square not quite a square they used it so effectively in this yeah. movie because he takes up most of it when you're watching it, because it's from the back. Yeah, typically. it looks like a, it looks like a video game. He's just walking. Yeah, kind of like a third of person uh, that, camera for that, him. That that uh, that short they did when Nathan Fillion was playing uh, Nathan Drake, mm. where it kind of looks like you're playing Uncharted. But there's a doing a four by three. Uh, you it gives everything a, f- a closer uh, framing of mm-hmm. it. So there's death scenes in here that are way too close and that makes me uncomfortable and i was like that's very effective we are so close to this yeah it didn't that's wild but there's also the opposite effect of a four by three which is things are so far away so far away and that's my most effective kill scene to me other than log splitting was uh the lake before yoga that's one I hated. That one was amazing because that one was so creepy. That was just Jaws. That was that was just Jaws. I didn't feel Jaws at all. What I felt was it's a girl swimming and then she disappears underneath and then comes back up a little bit and then disappears again and then it's quiet. That's Jaws. And it was a shark the That's, whole time. Yeah, it was a shark the whole time. That's what so, they were saying. No, but that was happened, just the beginning of Jaws. Well, this one was voyeuristic. Okay. This one felt creepy to me. It felt like I wasn't. A, I would. I shouldn't be watching. This. There are the two girls, and they're getting flirty yeah. with each other, and he mm-hmm. is watching from like the other side of the from lake. the other side of the lake, and he just 
walks right into the lake. I thought that was a very effective that's, walk into that's it. That's what bugged me. So I went back and I watched. We have a video up on our YouTube page where uh, last year about this time I bought a uh, capture card and we did a couple Let's Plays and then we just kind of stopped doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, but we talked about how Jason could just like walk underwater. Yeah. And then Johnny can walk underwater. Johnny can walk underwater. Uh-huh. They don't show that. No. I was so upset that they don't show what's happening under that water because that's the only like i left <laughs> when this movie was over i was like why couldn't they showed me so why much? do you need to see it because what's happening down there he's, he's walking but he's still buoyant he still is the laws of physics still apply to him no they don't he's alive when he's a zombie thing i understand <laughs> but he still falls when he I'm gets shot, say, he falls down. So he before can the tricked, movie even he can, starts, an he evil can, wizard blessed him, saying, "You can walk underwater really fast." He doesn't walk really fast. It takes him a while to get over there. So I is mean, he just walk, I is couldn't it, walk that fast. Is it a is it a Pirates of the Caribbean skeletons thing where he just walks underneath the water? Yeah, that's what. Uh, but again, I wasn't thinking about that at all. That's all I was thinking about. All I was thinking was that he's going over there, and yeah. I think me and Johnny had the same thought, nope. which is. Oh, he's going to go over there and kill. I just... Somebody. Okay, so for a movie where all you do is follow the killer, they're like, oh, we're going to follow the killer the whole time, except for the one time he's doing something interesting. <laughs> we followed him. <laughs> That's the most interesting He's part. walking underwater. That's not interesting to you. This is the... I did not expect that this is what we would talk about. That's my biggest gripe with this movie. The biggest gripe is that you didn't see him swim. He, you're saying he doesn't swim. I'm saying I don't know. I don't care. But they could have showed us that. Why? They showed us everything else. Why should they show us that? Because I wanted to see Why it. didn't they show us what they ate at the cabin? I'm thinking that they were starving the whole he, time. He wasn't eating. Why wasn't there a line where they said... Good thing we ate breakfast today. I'm full of food. No, 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 no. I no. want to know you're if they, pro- were, they, if proving, they were hungry the whole time. You're proving my point. Because How? this whole movie says that they're following the killer the whole time. I'm just saying there was one time. Well, I'm just saying that I didn't see any breakfast when he was in the cabin. Because he doesn't eat. He well, doesn't I'm saying eat. I'm talking about the kid. I'm talking about the kids. It's not about the kids. It's about the killer. It's I'm about talking, Johnny. Then why doesn't he eat? Because he's dead. What are you talking about? He's dead. He's still physics apply. Physics apply to corpses. They float. <laughs> Famously, <laughs> physics apply to people. They eat I just want to know is if he's like poop. treading water, like having to stay. Is he being sneaky? Because he he does I'm have thinking what he does have a bit of intelligence. Comic books did to people's brains is they get rid of the mythological aspect. First of, of all, don't, creatures. Don't come at me that. I love a mythological aspect. Then why are you, we fighting on I'm this not, part? No, I'm not saying that it's a plot hole. Like, oh, he couldn't have done that because he does. He lays traps. So there's a scene where he's trying to get people out of a, a house. So he takes his axe and he wedges it in a car horn and then walks all the way around. Yeah. So he knows what he's doing. Yeah. So there is a sense of intelligence there. He's not just a, a Frankenstein's monster. Well, actually, not Frankenstein's monster could read, and he actually like had he relationships with people. Yeah, but he's not just like a like an old mummy, like you know, just <laughs> wandering. And he's not a zombie. He he's no. making plans and he's doing yeah. shit. And he sees people. And, that's and they do kind of because they talked about how he's kind of a he was a slow he's a kid. Slow kid, yeah. And you don't and you don't know if it's because he's slow that he's acting this way or it's because he's right. a monster. That but he's he's, acting he's this not way. mindless. They do the yeah. thing a couple times where mm-hmm. it's like they do this with uh, movies where there's a dog. And they'll like cut to a dog's face, and then they'll cut to like a a poster, and they'll cut back to the dog's face, and you're supposed to be like, the dog's reading, like that's that's what's happening, like he's gaining information. They do this with this killer sometimes. Yeah, they do. We'll cut to him, and then he'll look around, and be like, oh, he gets it, <laughs> like he knows what's going on. So uh-huh. I'm not saying that there's a plot hole with this. I'm just saying, well, I'm just saying that people don't when they write freaking uh, Beowulf. They're not being like, this is what Grendel's, this is how he's there able was to a, live in a cave. There was a whole book called forever. Grendel, written from Grendel's perspective, they didn't that goes talk- through all of the minutia of it. The minutia that they go through isn't the minutia of, is he going to swim butterfly if he gets into a lake? I'm, but I'm just saying, if you show everything else, why don't you show that? There's an even, let's talk about Grendel for a little bit, because they okay. even talk about- I haven't uh, read it in 20 years. The dragon uh-huh. that- uh, he talks to third boss. The dragon understands uh, time completely differently than we do. Uh huh. To the point where time doesn't af- affect him. Right. That doesn't conflict with anything for you no, about a no, dragon. No, 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 no. I'm not saying I. I. It's not that I'm doubting the mm-hmm. logic of the piece. Uh huh. I'm saying as a filmmaker. Yeah. Why don't you show me what he's doing? <laughs> because there's no way they could have afforded. 
a, you a can't pool. get a, you can't get a GoPro. Dude, I want to see it look good as well. I want to see it look silly. I think it would be a lot better if he was just like doing like a silly thing, try to stay underwater. <laughs> because that's that was his whole plan. So that's what I was thinking. <laughs> so he's making plans and he has a thing. So it's like, okay, he knows he wants to get over there. And he's like, I could just walk around because he, you know, he has the capacity. Mm. Or if he can just walk through the water. I saw a guy. It was just like, oh, I'm just going to walk over there. And Have you ever tried to just walk into the ocean? Well, that's the thing. You don't just stay on the bottom. I'm not a killer. That's a reanimated corpse. And also, when he kills the yoga girl, she yeah. doesn't jump off a cliff, and then it cuts away to the cliff, and it's a very slim slope that's sandy, and she could have yeah. just walked out it. No way. You don't no think way. so? He no. pushes her off the cliff afterwards. I would have hesitated just looking down that slope. Just a minute? Yeah. A and minute enough to that I would get heavier. disemboweled and then have a hook go through my so stomach and that, into my head. Was that your favorite kill? No. My favorite kill was the lake. Yeah. Mm. The lake was uh, so effective. So I like that was, scene. That made me creeped out in a way that movies don't really creep me out anymore. Really? And it was because of the fantastic framing. It was because of the awesome sound design. Yeah. Oh, if, sound design is movies. Sound design a lot of is a lot of crinkling leaves the and stuff like that. Star of this damn movie. I mean, it's not dialogue heavy, so yeah. Yeah. It has but to be having it having no score with mm-hmm. it, but also just having like the drowning crickets. Yeah. It just. That feels so visceral to me, living out in the woods for so long as I have. Exactly. You know? That stuff was awesome. It was great. But that, yeah, that feeling like I'm watching something that I'm not supposed to be watching, like, yeah. like I'm spying, that was, I thought they shot that exquisitely. Right. That so, shit was crazy. I, I will say with the sound design as well, and also the framing, the one part of the movie where I was... Because I think you're, you've are you done a good job of ma- making me watch horror movies where I wasn't scared by this at all. Good. I kind of see where it's going. Hell yeah. And I get the tropes. It was just that when... So there's a guy who shows up and he's like, oh, I killed him before. And, you know, like, I got that it was interesting that we don't get... We get bits and pieces of the backstory just because we're only hearing people talk when, yeah. uh, you know, the killer's there and he's above water. Mm-hmm. And then, like, this guy, like, starts a fight with him. And Johnny just breaks his spine, paralyzes him, and I'm like, that's fucked up. Yeah. And then slowly drags him over to a hydraulic log splitter. You know what that felt like? What? Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay, so yeah, I have a question for you about that, mm-hmm. for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Because mm-hmm. uh, I I didn't really like that movie either. No, you didn't. And this definitely gives me Texas Chainsaw vibes. Yeah, and that's what they were going for with that kill, with the log splitter kill. Yeah. Absolutely. That one was a very good kill to me, too, the log splitter one, because that one was like, he's very methodical, he's very slow, he's there to torture right, people. but at first he, so, like, yeah, he, so the guy makes plans. Yeah. So he... Well, I don't know how much he makes plans where he... He thinks will, it out because he paralyzes the guy because he remembered him, and he was like, I want to, he's not just going to well, kill this guy. I don't know if he remembered him, but... Everyone else, he it just... It feels like that, right? That one, that that kill felt personal. Right. But like, it also felt to me... Say what you want about the you know the kid that he choked out and then cut the top of his head off. Mm-hmm. Pretty quick death. That was a that was awesome. I wasn't expecting that guy that to die first. Like uh, I wasn't expecting that guy to die first. I really thought he was yeah. going to be the one that kind of held out. Like he reminded me of the uh, the stoner kid from uh, Cabin in the Woods. Sure, sure. I thought sure. he was going to be that character that kind of makes it through. That death felt so much like Friday the Thirteenth. No, that was, it was very incredible. Yeah. And then he just walks around with his corpse for Dragon. like hours, yeah. and then he uses it to break the glass of the thing so that he can get his, his max and hooks. I, the character design was fine. I don't. I don't think. I thought it was goofy, and I loved it for it. I like the character design when he had his mask on. When I, there's when one he had scene, his mask off, I appreciated it more. That's what I didn't like it. See, we're on opposite ends of this movie. Yeah. I thought it, that probably would have been better if you didn't know what he looked like halfway through the movie. They show you what he looks like, yeah. and you're like, oh, no, it felt pretty. Just uh, kind of like a, a pale, like a water Jason log- revealing thing, like waterlogged sloth from yeah. Goonies. Yeah, it's a like little kinda bit. Like, hmm. But it's like I think it's scary if you, you don't see know. The, the unknown is scarier. You can see the dead eyes to him. Yeah, you say that, but then you're like, how does he swim in the water? No, I know. <laughs> it's not a matter of I don't think he can. <laughs> I just want to know how. 
<laughs> Another thing, like I'm not being nitpicky about this. He starts that hydraulic log splitter, yeah. which has a pull start, yeah. first try. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking impossible. I al- That's more impossible than getting across the lake unseen. <laughs> I also love that. In one go. He has, I'm wondering if he put the log in first right. that was there so that <laughs> for the benefit he does, he does of the ranger and the, the audience. Guy. Yeah. He's like. Because like we watch it, we're like, that's a log splitter, you that's, know. That's why it feels personal. But there must because be people... he shows the guy this is what's going to yeah, happen to right? you, but and then he does it to his arm, and then he does it to his head. But I also don't know how much the audience knows what a log splitter is. Yeah. So I don't know if it's this like a part of that, just being like, po- get this is how a log things, splitter works. Getting one of those things started isn't easy. No. Yeah. And also, uh, I think that's uh, probably my second most effective scene. Is I that thought- one? I was watching that with the, and like I said, I had popcorn. I really felt like the uh, the Jerry Seinfeld eating popcorn meme where I'm just like, ah, it's a shame. Like I <laughs> yeah. saw where this is going. I'm like, that's good. I was watching where it was going. And I was just like you. wondering how they're going to shoot it. And I they, thought he they was going to go uh, through the middle. Yeah, right. Like Me the, too. Bisect him, like up log ways. But and I was like, I don't want to watch that. Keeping it a, a one static shot like they did, yeah. it felt like mm-hmm. it, they didn't. I didn't really catch when they switched to a dummy and they cut the dummy's head off. You know what no, I mean? No, they do. What's it? Is that a, a jersey swap where they like black out the camera for a second? Something like that where he's walking around the right. splitter. So he's so it's possible in the whole like thing. That. Yeah. But you can see his eyes blinking and stuff while the mm-hmm. uh, splitter's coming down on his neck. Which that's easy to do in CGI now. Sure. So but I was like, this is good. It, it just looks really good yeah. to me that it felt like. No, yeah, that's I didn't why feel that switch to the dummy. That was my favorite kill because I was like, "This is a this is like," and it was just quiet and uh, yeah, and nothing going on, mm-hmm. and just and it was just horrifying. you just have to sit here and wait while he kills him. There's one guy that gets uh, an axe thrown to the back of the head, just yeah. quick death. I'm like, that guy got off fucking easy. Yeah, like if I had to die anyway in this, I'd be like, "Yep, <laughs> just guy running away and then just axe to the back yeah. of the head, just go down like a like a bandit in Red Dead Redemption, <laughs> just, <laughs> just yeah. done." I was, uh, I like that. Uh, kill a lot because mm-hmm. it was very gruesome and mm-hmm. it was uh, executed really well. And then the next kill after that is the guy who's like, I'm going to go distract him. Right. And then he was like, Hey, you stupid. And then he just gets chopped and he's chopped he and chopped the and fuck chopped out of him while his girlfriend just watches. That was so funny. Yeah. So funny. And it was even funnier because they just had a well executed and a just like mm-hmm. crazy disturbing kill right to just <laughs> a yeah. gory gore fest kill yeah. i was like that is so funny to to cut to the woman just standing there staring while you hear the chop 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 and she slowly just puts she the just necklace puts back the stuff she, down that's the cool twist she really me. she really does like a homer sinking back into the bushes <laughs> just like and i'm out of here that's the cool twist to me is mm. that movie says uh because they establish what really needs to happen they need to bring the him and the necklace back to the fire tower where he was buried mm-hmm. to get him back underneath and she was like i'm just gonna leave this necklace here mm-hmm. and i'm just gonna run for it <laughs> dip out and she did that yeah now i will say great wait, i was expecting the the very ending so like i won't spoil it but at the ending you get a feeling that something's gonna happen mm-hmm. like right at the end mm-hmm. and i was just like that did not play out the way i thought it to and i was just like interesting yep that's that's to me is what effective horror is yeah there's a lot of talk now because the silent hill 2 remake is out mm-hmm. that's one of the best horror games ever made okay and now they're saying that the remake is really uh well done i haven't played it yet is that capcom as well no that's konami okay they're crushing it with the horror remakes if they did re4 and everyone loves it now that's capcom silent. right but i'm just saying the, that yeah. kind of i hear you the kind of the yeah. bellwethers of I the was, horror genre i was really on the fence if this was going to be good why can't we get a dino crisis remake that, that's going to be in the works. It has to be. It has to be. It has to if, be. If all the, if it will happen. RE4 and Silent Hill 2 yeah. are making all these These things are popping off. It will happen. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Dino what I want to say is what made Silent Hill 2 such an effective video game is they set you up for a scare four out of five times. Nothing happens. Oh, shit. That's man. the good stuff because yeah. two things happen where you're either stressing out because you're like, I have to do this and... Mm-hmm. I don't want to get scared. So you like build yourself up and then nothing happens and you right. have to let it go to the point where the next time it happens, you're like, nothing's going to happen because nothing does happen. Right. And then it does happen there. That's how they built it up in yeah. violent nature really well because they just, her looking out to the woods and you're like, I think I see him. Right. I think I see him there. Yeah. And you're like, mm, I don't know. So yeah, uh, I think the movie that you've recommended horror wise when you did this last or no, actually I think it was like episode two. You made me watch it follows mm-hmm. and I was, 
I thought that movie was better than this movie. Yeah, I would say so, but I it's love it. It's kind of the same pacing. This the beginning of this was the pacing of it was so slow. It was like watching Under the Skin again. Yeah. Where I'm just like fucking something happened. Man, I am so into those movies, huh? Yeah, you are. That's and they crazy. just they don't hit with me. I, I was I was drinking it in. I was I, so happy. I like ten minutes in this movie I want to see Brad Pitt and George Clooney on screen talking <laughs> to each other. I don't want to see this schmuck. This movie I just want to hear somebody be like, The college kids are coming to town. We need to get you out of these bear traps. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Okay, I'm picking it up. I mean, yeah. I understand. You. I mean, yeah, it just it didn't click with me. Damn. And it's not, and I will say this, mm-hmm. it's not because it was a horror movie. Uh-huh. It's just one of those movies where I was just like, I see what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you doing it. Okay. Not for me. Understood. Yeah. I can understand. Yeah. Yeah. I think a this is a- was fucking cool though. Yes. I would I, say this I is a classic. A, I worked a summer with that. Uh, my, it's like, I was in high school. My uncle had a, a, a big tree fall down in his yard and just for like a summer job for like two weeks. I just had to cut it up with a chainsaw and then split it into firewood and stack it for him. Mm-hmm. Those things, I, the first day, he was just like, don't just put things in there and try to cut it. I'm like, I'm going to do exactly that <laughs> Like as soon as you leave. like I'm like, all right. I got, uh, I think I actually took a, a mini keg from a bar we used to work at. Holy. It was empty. You pushed it. <laughs> it was empty. It was I like, know. It was like dead. But I was like, that's metal. <laughs> yeah, it'll cut right through it. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I wouldn't have expected well, that. I mean, it kind of—it's like when you watch those hydraulic press videos, mm-hmm. where it's not that it breaks it; it just moves it all out of the way. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. But it's pretty realistic to uh, that guy getting his head cut off. Yeah, his head blood was a different color. <laughs> that was CGI blood. That's I, what I, would I say. understand, yeah. but I don't know if they were just making the color different to be like, and now there's this blood, but his arm no. blood, and his head blood was a different color. So no. I was just like, huh. I think there was just—is uh, that a thing? putting cgi blood into it and they were like it's all you can't get it uh, in the lighting correctly right yeah i think that's what it was i thought it was like in my head i was like is it like spinal fluid but i don't know much about head blood no mm. you never got a wound on your head not from having my uh being decapitated no no i had a i had a bump on my noggin yeah it's the same color blood i have a, a scar permanent scar on my neck i was swinging a yo-yo around and i broke a light fixture and a piece of glass went right into my neck. Yikes. Yeah. It's back when yo-yos were cool. Back when I was wearing Jinkos and bucket hats. Oh, yeah, sixth grade. Always cool. Yeah. I had a fireball and I had a Yomega Black Mamba. <laughs> <laughs> the Black Mamba is where it's at. It's pretty dope. I'm pretty sure they still sell that. A Yomega. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. It gets a one for me. It gets a three for Jake. If you like horror movies, I think you're going to like this. Absolutely. But it's I I watched a horror movie and I can be angry enough. I'm not angry, I would but say just like, yeah, it's not for me. It's too slow. If you like deconstructing what a horror movie is, yes. you would like this movie. I don't. I like Friday. I think my favorite one out of these genres is I like the first Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. I like Friday the 13th 2 better than I like Friday the 13th 3. Sure. Or Friday the 13th 1. Yeah. yeah. I would have to agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I like that game, too. That was a fun game we played. Yeah. Where you get to be Jason and just murdering people. It was pretty fun, yeah. yeah. All right. So thank you, everybody, for listening. I want to thank uh, Jimmy for doing all of our artwork. I want to thank our buddy's brother, Bill for uh, giving us their theme song. If you want to get in touch with the show, you can email us uh, upyouralleypod at gmail.com. Also, like this video on YouTube. Probably should start saying that at the beginning because I think it actually helps the algorithm and stuff. Uh, (laughs) But let's find out what we're going to be talking about next week. Jake, what do you got for me? Uh, Let's do something fun. Okay. A TV show that I haven't seen in a long time. Is it Only Murders in the Building? It's Only Murder... No, it's going to be Better Off Ted. Better Off Ted? Yeah, it's going to be Better Off Ted. I have no idea what that is. It's on Hulu. It's comedy. It was on for one season... Yeah. Uh it's great. Huh. It's very hilarious. It's the big draw is Portia de Rossi, isn't it? It's about, Lindsay Lindsay Funke? Yeah. Okay. And it's just about uh this corporation and the head of HR working against the head of the company, well the manager of the company. Uh-huh. And uh funny things happen throughout. Okay. Give it a couple Random. shots. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to give you something that you like to say like head off just fun comedy yeah hey, here we go buddy well this, this should be a uh, gift to you so this is something that we had talked about my recommendation and you said it's on hulu right yeah all right i'll check it out um some that we had talked about and you said i actually was uh listening to a podcast where they were talking about this show and you accidentally did not want to watch it you said i have no interest in this mm-hmm. uh and you know, I really think the team involved in it is pretty good. I think it's a lot better than I thought it would. And I think you're really going to enjoy this. Okay. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? Mm-mm. I wanted to 
Game of Thrones Dragon Dragons. No, no, no. Uh, it's on streaming now. I wanted to punish you after how much I didn't like A Violent Nature and make you watch Ancient Apocalypse Season 2. No. But I no. figured you just wouldn't want to do that. Oh, no. It's not great. I watched <laughs> I watched most of Ancient Apocalypse Season 2. I saw two. that Keanu Reeves is in it. He is. He's not in it for long. Big surprise. What? Yeah. You thought he was all in with it. No. It's crazy. It's very silly. Graham Hancock's like, he's... It's it's not great. <laughs> I, if there was something that I feel like we could get any content out of it, even in content and how much you like things, the problem is mm-hmm. when you don't like stuff, you just like I don't even want to talk about it. When I don't like things, I have strong opinions about. Because them. I know that people do like it. I know, oh. and it's like I don't want to hurt people's feelings. Right. I watched. I watched. A, it was on my phone while I was making cookies, and I was just like, "This is fine." Yeah. And every now and again, he'll say something, and you're just like, "What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> that can't be right, you silly old man." I should lean into being a little more mean about stuff. No, nah, but here's something I think you were going to write off, but you're very much going to enjoy. Okay. I want you to watch a movie available to stream right now. Movie. It is called Hellboy the Crooked Man. Oh, wow. Okay. So you famously mm. like the first two Hellboys. Uh-huh. You have not seen third Hellboy. No. Paul so W.S. Anderson's one, you know. I want you to watch this Hellboy. Okay. I want you to go into it knowing it is not trying to uh, reboot the Guillermo del Toro Hellboy. It is completely different. It's Hellboy. It's in the 1950s. He's in Appalachia. Just why are they trying another Hellboy? Because, buddy, I thought the same thing. And I saw the trailer for it, and I said, this looks like a student film. But Mm -hmm. I tell you, you are going to be delighted. I will be shocked if this does not come back with you saying, I was wrong. This is a three. You see, I will admit when yeah. I'm wrong about stuff. Yeah. You thought you weren't going to like Wolves, and Wolves fucking ruled. Wolves was, yeah, beyond my expectations. All right, that movie so I'm going to watch Better Off Ted. Jake's going to watch. Yeah, boy. What a random fucking thing. Thanks for helping with the algorithm. Uh, Jake's going to yeah, watch. that's why, because I've been helping with the algorithm. <laughs> yeah. And that's not me, man. That ain't me. I'm done with that. <laughs> <laughs> and Jake's going to watch uh, Hellboy the Crooked Man, both available to stream right now. Uh, Jake, thanks for having me over. Love you, bud. I love you, buddy. Bye. Bye.